and welcome to Giga Jam. This is the introductory lesson of the Essential Keyboard Skills course, part one. Now, as with all the instruments that we study with Giga Jam, we have this introductory lesson to get to know our instrument and also the Giga Jam software that we'll be interacting with. In the studio with me is our tutor, Terry Gregory. Terry, how are you today? I'm fine, how are you? Feeling good, feeling good. good. Um, you're our keyboard tutor, you're also our bass tutor. I've it's seen you many times. It's interesting, isn't it? You know that. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm a bass player, but I've learned a lot from this fantastic instrument, the keyboard. Indeed. Well, the keyboard is what we'll be studying over ten parts. Mm -hmm. What do we need to follow this course? We need a keyboard. What sort of keyboard? Doesn't matter. Any keyboard. Whether it's a keyboard that you might see in a concert hall or a classroom or in somebody's home, or whether it's a keyboard like the ones we have in front of us, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got a keyboard, you can get going. OK. Or even a piano. Or even a piano. Yep. That oh, would be fine. Nice right. stuff. So, talk us through what the components are of this instrument. Yeah, well I guess everyone uh, probably knows, I'm, I'm sure most people have seen a keyboard and the keyboard itself uh, and playing it is about depressing the keys. These are the keys, whether they're white or black, and you simply push them down with your fingers or your thumb. You can either press one at a time or you could press a whole bunch of them and play a chord. You can do that with either hand play a, a scale or a melody pattern or something, or a chord. So and you can do that, I'm doing it sort of in the middle of the keyboard here, where I'd play with my right hand, mm -hmm. but I could do it down at the bottom end of the keyboard with my left hand, so it would sound much lower in pitch. Same sort of thing. A scale pattern or a melody. Mm -hmm. Than a chord. Okay, and chords and melodies we'll talk about in the course. Yeah, and what we'll get into is actually uh, playing keyboard um, in the Essential Keyboard Skills course is about um, being a, a, a band player, being a band member. So it won't be like a conventional piano course um, where you, you learn to play some, um, some interesting pieces. It'll be more about learning to play chords mm -hmm. and maybe some melody and fitting in with the other guys mm -hmm. in the band so that you can play um, the uh, lesson 10, the piece mm -hmm. at the end of the Essential Keyboard Skills course. The interesting thing about the keyboard is it, it looks quite daunting, doesn't it? When you first meet it, you know, yes. you see all these notes, massive amount of notes. It's quite confusing, it's quite difficult to, uh, to understand what's going on. Well, mm. it's really pretty simple when you know. It's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> um, really, the keyboard is about one small section yeah. copied a whole load of times. One small section copied a number of times. That's exactly it. So uh, c conventionally we start mm. at the note of C. Yeah. Uh, and there's mm. a C. Mm -hmm. How do you know it's a C? Uh, it looks the same as every other key on this board. It looks the same as every other key. Well, there's part of the organisation, this black and white monochrome patterning, uh, this system, this shape. Um, there's, mm. there's what we're calling C mm -hmm. and next to it is a black note and then another note, and then another black note. So it's the one that lives between the two black notes. Right. If you go up the keyboard a bit more, you get to three black notes in a row. So have got quite a lot of information here, but hang in there, because when you get to there... Those two black notes again. You can see the pattern repeated, can't you? There's the one white note before the two black notes. So that is a C again. So really, all you need to do on the keyboard, in terms of visualization and understanding mm -hmm. the keyboard and the way it's laid out sort of keyboard orientation is that one section mm -hmm. uh, which we call an octave because it's eight notes eight notes one two three four five six seven eight there's our eight notes and that's an octave and essentially that's what a keyboard is about and if you look at it that one section or sector of the keyboard that mm -hmm. one octave is repeated again and again and again, and if I had a larger keyboard, it would be repeated. Oh, so that's how it works. The difference in size, if you've got a smaller one, which which bits do you get? You sort of maybe only get four or five octaves. In the middle, in the centre of the keyboard, because they're the bits that you're going to use most when you play, you know. You're not going to really get into playing up there very much, and maybe not down there very much, until later on. Um, and of course, we, we did the keyboard going up, mm -hmm. ascending, uh, up through the right hand and, and those notes would be written in the treble clef on yeah. the stave. The same thing, the same pattern of course works the other way so we just took this as our nominal starting point but we could have started anywhere on the keyboard. So if we go back down there's going down an octave so there's that one octave mm -hmm. shape again there's that C note before the two black notes and then that will continue down into the area which is 
known as the bass clef, written on the bass clef in the stave, yeah. and played with the left hand. So again, when you're playing a keyboard, you might have two hands quite close together, mm -hmm. or you might have the two hands a bit further apart. And the essential keyboard skills will look at that, will look at developing this kind of two-hand coordination, practicing one hand on its own, practicing the other hand on its own, and then putting them both together mm -hmm. to play maybe some chords and a melody or something. So we'll be playing with two hands there on the keyboard. Yeah, we want to get both hands going as soon as we can and developing that two-hand coordination. There are, and there are special exercises in the essential keyboard skills mm -hmm. lessons to help us improve and practice that. What other functions have we got on a keyboard? I mean, we've got obviously the, the piano sound, which you demonstrated. Yeah, good point, Natalie. I mean, um, uh, in the old days, people would probably have had a keyboard, uh, uh, sorry, a piano is their first instrument, a piano forte, which you see in a concert hall or uh, you see in school or you see in the church hall. Yeah, big old kind of wooden thing. Yeah, either an upright or a concert grand, if you're lucky enough, which can be quite expensive, those concert grands. How much? Um, oh, well, they could be anything up to, you know, tens of thousands of pounds. Uh, something like the keyboard you've got in front of you is probably, I don't know, typically around 150 pounds, something like that, give or take. One of these uh, keyboards might cost as much as a thousand pounds. So, but it doesn't really matter, you know, get hold of a keyboard and get practicing. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, uh, we talked earlier about, you know, actually the process is using your fingers and, and, and thumb and being comfortable and just de depressing the keys. When you depress, depress the keys on this keyboard or on your keyboard, um, what's happening on a modern keyboard is it's just closing an electrical contact right. and that's triggering the sound, which is a synthesized or a sampled sound. In a piano, in a real piano, it's a quite different mechanism. and. Uh, uh, um, it's you press the, the key down on a piano and inside the piano, you know, you're talking about the upright piano, there's a mechanism, there's a whole bunch of mechanics. There's a hammer. So when you press that key, a hammer falls and strikes a string. So the reason pianos are, are quite large, either standing up as an upright or with that length you see in a concert grand piano, is because they actually have strings in them, like the strings on a bass guitar or a guitar. So they're a stringed instrument? Yeah, they're a, well, they're a percussion instrument because really you're mm. pressing the keyboard down on a p real piano and the hammer inside the mechanism is striking the oh, string and producing right. the tone. So they're really part of the percussion family. So we're, we're um, really picking up on that and saying, well, it's, it's a percussion instrument, it's a rhythm instrument, and it's part of the rhythm section. And so the Essential Keyboard Skills course is written that w with that very clearly in mind. It takes you through that kind of progressive structured learning to help you play as a member of the rhythm section, to play with your, your, your friends mm -hmm. in a band situation. Okay. So we've got the keyboards in front of us. Obviously mine's a bit smaller, which yeah. I could, you know, it could be used in a school or I can use it at home. They're quite loud. Yeah. I mean, that's a good thing, isn't it? You know, you can't carry around a real piano, whereas you could transport one of those. Um, if you're in a classroom situation at school, they're not likely to have 30 real pianos. Yeah. Uh, but they might have a bunch of these or something. Um, so. But again, that's going to be quite noisy. Well, yeah, it could be quite noisy. I mean, as you can see, you've got speakers there. Mm -hmm. these, these are the speakers. So it's totally self-contained in the sense that you plug it in and you play. And of course, it is noisy, but you can control the volume. I've got speakers here. Mm -hmm. You can turn the volume Ooh, up yeah. too loud or turn the volume down a bit. The other cool thing is that you can use headphones, of course. You could plug right. into the headphone socket and you could you know, work silently. You can just practice on your own, working through the essential keyboard skill stuff without uh, uh, bugging anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, for the interactive software, you can just hook up to your computer, your laptop or your PC or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just plug the keyboard straight into it via a MIDI lead, and you can access the software immediately. Do all the keyboards would work would work like that then? Yeah, anything that's MIDI enabled would be right. fine. Would be fine. Um, so, and the difference between this keyboard and the keyboard you, you you're sitting with is that this is really based on and 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 copying a piano. It's got a few sounds, a couple of different piano sounds. There's an electric piano sound. It's only got. Uh, 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 half a dozen or so, maybe ten sounds. The beauty of the keyboard that you've got in front of you mm -hmm. is that it's light, it's good value, uh, it's self-contained, and it's got access to a lot of other sounds, so we won't get into that much mm -hmm. now or indeed in the Essential Keyboard Skills lessons because we want to focus on studying, yeah. learning about chords and harmony. And it doesn't matter whether you, you, you're a, a drummer or a bass player. Um, I. I've learned a lot about music, about how the relationships work between music and chords and scales. 
I've learned as much on the keyboard as I've learned really? from playing bass. Yeah, because it's all kind of laid out in front of you. You can see how the scale looks. You can see where the chord is. Mm -hmm. You can combine and compare. You can play a chord in the left hand and then check the notes in the right hand. So it quickly uh, reinforces all mm. that kind of information and knowledge and helps me to understand it more. So who is the Essential Keyboard Skills course for? What's the ideal viewer for this course? Yeah, anybody really, anybody that's ever fancied playing a bit of keyboards. Um, some people uh, uh, will have had uh, conventional um, keyboard lessons, more like piano lessons at yeah. school. So we won't be getting into that area, we'll be focusing on contemporary music, on modern music, popular music, learning to play some some popular music and the chords and scales and all that stuff and the techniques associated with that. So it doesn't matter whether you've had piano lessons at school or not, mm -hmm. you might be a drummer. You're going to learn a lot about yeah. how music works from um, from going through the Essential Keyboard Skills lessons. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's for the musician, isn't it? I suppose if you're a guitar player or a drummer or a bass guitarist, like our very own Terry Gregory, it's helped you, hasn't it? Oh, enormously, yeah. An understanding of the keyboard and being able to see all that laid out has improved me as a musician and a bass player. Let's now talk about Giga Jam and how okay. we can interact the two. So what is Giga Jam? Yeah, well, the good thing about Giga Jam is it's a very organised system. It's a very structured learning pathway, you know. So I'm sure the guys will have absolutely no problems following it all the way through. It's very clearly laid out. Each lesson, as we'll see when we go through it now, um, each lesson has lesson objectives at the beginning. So mm -hmm. you know exactly what you're looking at, exactly what you're uh, uh, attempting to achieve. Yeah. Um, and the system that Giga Jam uses throughout <clears throat> is introduces a bit of knowledge, mm -hmm. helps you to understand it, and then helps you to apply it. So what, that means, what do you mean? Yeah. Um, an explanation in the text, uh, as you can see, and then yeah. if you scroll down a bit, there'll be um, some more text. There's a picture of the keyboard, mm -hmm. so showing you some ideas, showing you some information, giving you the knowledge, helping you to understand it. Then there's more text, as you can see. Then there's the musical stave, so it shows you where the note lives on mm -hmm. the treble clef or the bass clef. So, knowledge, helping you to understand it. And then, the key thing about it is playing. Actually putting those exercises into practice so you can try those things out for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the way the software supports your learning is um, there are those little icons there. Um, the first one, when we click on it, will open up a video clip right. so that we can look at somebody else playing the example, playing the exercise that we're looking, currently looking at. You, know. mm -hmm. you can see it for real. You're doing it now. Good for you. So what's the advantage of being able to see it? Well, I mean, it's interesting, you know, often people um, learn to play by ear, which is a fantastic skill, because obviously music is all about hearing things. So Giga Jam helps you to do that because it plays you the examples and you can hear how they sound. Uh, it also shows you real pictures, because yeah. some people's visual understanding is better. So um, the way that the, uh, the, the teachers would talk about this um, structured pathway and the way it's supported in Giga Jam is that it's multi-sensorial. It allows you to read, it allows you to look, it mm -hmm. allows you to hear, it allows you to try. It, it, it um, illustrates the information and the knowledge in all sorts of different ways so yeah. you can access it whichever way is best for you. Covering all bases. Well said. All right, so that was our first icon. That was the first icon, which was the video clip, and you can loop that video clip round. You can watch it a couple of times. You don't even have to try. You know, if you want to see somebody else, which finger is using, how much pressure is using, where the hand is located, what the, the technique issues mm. are involved, you can just study that for a couple of minutes first, see how it goes. You could play along with the video clip just to practice it so you get comfortable with the whole idea. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, you can open the next icon which is, I thought, what you were alluding to there. So this is the, the little icon with the musical stave and then the G. Yep. G for Giga Jam, G I'm for guessing. Giga Jam, and that's what we call the extractor. This is a fantastic piece of software, which, as you can see now, loads up a CD, which has the backing track on, the, 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 the virtual Giga Jam band. Mm -hmm. uh, and there it is. It, looks like, it always reminds me of a car stereo, this thing. <laughs> and, um, and then you can press play, and again it will play the exercise. Um, here it comes, there's four clicks. Okay. What, are the, what are the flashing lights that we've got there? The flashing lights, it's like a mixing desk really there. Uh, it shows you all the instruments that are playing. You can see acoustic piano, metronome, default instrument, MIDI, sorry, muted guitar yeah. and finger bass. 
So you can see all the other instruments playing. If you want those louder or quieter, you can adjust the volume. There you go, you clicking on the cursors. If you, for example, good, so you've reduced the bass. Yeah. So you can personalize the setting so that you are comfortable when you work. You can hear the, the GigaJam software playing the mm. keyboard part, playing the, the keyboard part that I'm going to have to play. Yeah. So you can mute that. You can click on that M mm -hmm. to the left of the instrument, and then that will mute the piano. I've muted it so much it's stopped. It's stopped. That's all right. You can play it again. <laughs> um, so you can mute the instrument. Yeah. First, I might listen to the instrument. I might listen to the GigaJam software demonstrating what I've got to play, just to remind me what I'm doing, mm -hmm. getting the sound of it, the note length, etc., etc., and then holding on to that idea and trying to match that when inevitably I come to play. So I might rehearse with the, with the software, with the exercise a few times, mm -hmm. try it out, just get the feel of it. When I'm ready, I can click on, or you can click on that red button. This one here. That's it, red for record, thank you. OK, so that's a Three, metronome, counting four. it in. That was my four clicks. And what are you doing? I'm playing the keyboard. I'm playing an A, which is the note that I need to play in exercise one of lesson one yeah. of the essential keyboard skills. We're giving a little sneak preview here, aren't we? Just a yeah. demonstration. Yeah. So this is how it works, and I would play that and keep playing it while you're recording it, mm -hmm. and it would go on and on and on. And, and you mentioned my... about muting out instruments. And... Yeah, you can do that. So if you wanted to take out... That piano's gone. That piano is just you playing now. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. OK, I'm going to stop this. OK. I presume with the stop button. Good. There it is. So what we've just done is recorded my performance of the exercise, exercise one. Yeah. And now great thing about the software, the GigaJam software, is we can have a look at that performance. Mm -hmm. So you can press A for analyzer. Right. Thank you. And the analyzer should open. And when it opens, we'll see in uh, notation, in music notation, written out in language that musicians use, there it is, what I actually just did. So let's explain that. That top, uh, the top staves, the treble and the bass clef there, you can see there's the perfect virtual version as played by the computer. Mm -hmm. So it plays one note. There's which is represented note. by the black blob with the tail on it. There what about go. this grey sort of exhaust stream coming out of yeah, it? Yeah, that's the exhaust stream of the note. That's <laughs> to say that's how long that note should last. It's, it's lasting for the whole bar. Uh, it's a whole note, and there's the note length. And my job is, when I play that exercise, to play the right note mm -hmm. at the right time at the beginning of the bar and to continue the sound of that note, so to hold that note down for four complete beats. Right? Yeah. So, and that will all be addressed in the content and the objectives of the lesson. Yeah. So as you can see, my note was on time. So this is your performance, this There's, bottom section. Yeah, and it's got a really funky colour coding system there, which allows you to see very quickly how good you were. You get a, uh, an overall grading, a percentage mm -hmm. score at the bottom, Mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't too bad, 67.71%, so that wasn't too bad. So it grades your performance, how well you've done, if you've hit the right note and if you've held it for the right amount of time. Exactly, yeah, and at the moment it's only one note, so no problem, but if I was playing a chord or something with a bunch of notes, yeah. it would measure all of the notes, that I played the right one, that I didn't hit any wrong notes, any unintended notes, or catch any other notes with my fingers. Obviously, the process is really accurate recording, you know. Yeah, I mean, to my ear, it sounded perfect, but here on the second bar, yeah. you've got an orange note, which, which means below average. Why have you got that? Because I'm below average. <laughs> uh, probably because I was talking to you and trying to do too much rather than focusing and concentrating on the music. Yeah. That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> and you're sticking to I'm it. Sticking well, to it's, it also shows the positioning, doesn't it? So if you're timing-wise, if you're slightly out... So I think I was a bit late on that yeah. note, probably because something else was going on, so... Um, a, a millisecond, probably, but obviously yeah. the computer's picked that up and it's not going to lie to Digital us. Digital technology, I mean, it's fantastic, isn't it, you know, but it is pretty unforgiving. And so um, I don't feel too bad about a 67% average. I probably, having looked at that now, and it's good that you're taking me through the process, is thought, OK, so occasionally my note was late. But if you look, most of my notes were black notes. So Spot on, they yeah. were on time. I think it was the length of note that I didn't hold on for quite the right amount be that too long or too short. Yeah, and that is consistent. So obviously you thought when you were playing it that you were playing the correct length, but now that it's pointing it out in full Technicolor... Yeah, so this is the really good thing about the software is that it allows you to, to revisit what you did 
to look at it in detail and then when you try it again you know exactly how you should adjust your performance yeah. to play slightly longer notes or make sure they're on time or whatever so you can you can learn by your mistakes it's fantastic we, we've seen it sort of in front of us on yep. the musical stave is there any way that we can listen to it yeah you can just go back to the extractor and play it back so that you you could just use your ears and listen along and see how it sounds and feels good idea natalie yeah so just press play and it should go so this is you playing now, not the Giga Jam Band. Ah, so that okay. was late. You kind of heard that very clearly there. That yeah. was very late. And we know this is your performance because at the bottom there it says your performance. Ah, I see. And you've got the... Um, Every time that note's being played, right at the bottom, that last little LED display almost there. Yep, there that's what is. I did. So that's how the extractor the uh, uh, performance, the recording, analysis, mm -hmm. looking at the ana analyzer, deciding how, what have I got to do to get a better performance. And obviously a better performance would be uh, reflected in the score, but I mean, I'm not so worried about that. I'm worried about, as you said, and how it sounds, how it felt. And when we listen back to it, we heard that it was different. It's interesting, isn't it? When you play, when you're playing along, mm. you might have felt that you did okay. Yeah. I mean, we kind of thought I'd done okay but that's probably because you're involved in the process. So it's really important to stand back from the process and analyze what you did, have a look at it and have a listen to it, mm. especially and think, okay, fine, you know, how did it sound and how did it feel? And then I'll have another go, take two if you like, mm. and, um, uh, uh, and try it again. The important thing to point out, of course, is that because of this keyboard, uh, which is MIDI enabled, I can connect up from a MIDI lead straight into the PC. Yeah. Uh, and that allows me to use the um, GigaJam software mm -hmm. so that all this can take place. But most keyboards, hopefully, will be MIDI enabled anyway, so you yeah. don't need to worry about that. Just check that, I'm sure they will. All be. right, well, that's nearly the end of our introductory lesson. Great. In a nutshell, what can we expect from the course? In a nutshell, what we can expect from the course is lots of fun, uh, playing chords, playing scales, developing two-hand coordination, mm -hmm. so that by the end of lesson 10 of the Essential Keyboard Skills lesson, you'll be able to play a piece in a band. Excellent stuff, Terry. I can't wait.